y'all, I'm Chef Amy Sins with Langwa, and this is my sidekick here, Chef Natasha. Tell <laughs> yes. everybody hello. Hi. So, I'm with Langwa, Chef Natasha. What company are you with? I'm with Sophisticated Southern Plates. And today we are making a Sicilian Italian New Orleans stuffed artichoke, and we are using kind of a take on Chef Natasha's crab cake recipe. So, this is going to be the most delicious stuffed artichoke you've ever had. And it's our tribute to the Sicilians today for St. Joseph's Day, which right. is March 19th, and it's when we would normally here in New Orleans have our St. Joseph's Day altars. So let's get started. Yeah, let's do it. Chef Natasha's gonna start mixing up the crab cake, but the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to work on these artichokes. And you'll see that when you have an artichoke, it has a stem. The stem, actually, if you peel it, is edible, but it's a little bit underappreciated here in the US. <laughs> and you have all these little things that are gonna poke you. The first step is to cut the top of it off. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. And then you'll have the start of what is the artichoke flour. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut each one of these little pointy things off that could potentially stick you. Chef Natasha, what you got in the bowl over there? Uh, we have fresh lemon juice. Uh, we got fresh Parmesan. We're gonna do a little bit of oil from the confit garlic and a little bit of olive oil to keep it moist. Lots of Italian breadcrumbs. Um, oh, we got granulated garlic, some onion powder, and like I said, lots of cheese, so. Lots of cheese, lots of deliciousness, and I have my artichoke all nice and cleaned out. It's easier if we cut the bottom off of it. That is going to allow it to sit flat in the pan. Now this artichoke needs to be steamed or cooked before you go ahead and stuff it. So I like to use my handy dandy instant pot. Uh, a lot of people have those at their house. Just fill the bottom with about two cups of water. If you want, you could add a little bit of lemon, some onion, fresh herbs, whatever you want into that water. And just go ahead and set your artichoke in there. Now my artichoke is in a steamer basket. The key is we wanna lift it off the bottom just enough that it's not gonna get soggy in the water. And we're gonna set that in there, lock our lid. I'm doing this backwards. I'm not used to doing it from this direction. <laughs> and we lock our lid. You're gonna set it at about 12 minutes high pressure. Once it gets to 12 minutes, just release the steam and your artichokes will be ready to stuff. Now, Chef Natasha. Yes. What you got? I got a cheesy goodness of crab meat, pretty much. <laughs> cheesy, cheesy goodness of crab meat. So we have, this is lump crab meat and our lump crab meat is coming from kind of like that back little flipper part of our crab. Um, it's best during warm months. That's when you're gonna get the best price on your crab meat, but you can use claw meat. Heck, if you only have access to shrimp or yep. even catfish, chop it up and use it right there in the bowl. Now, I have a pot of oil going. We're gonna check our temperature. My goal, because I love to fry things and I love all things fried. <laughs> all things fried. <laughs> Everything to excess, nothing to moderation. Uh, we're gonna fry some crawfish tails. Now in March here in South Louisiana, crawfish can be very plentiful and you have a handful or two or three left over after any crawfish boil. Fun thing to do with them is batter and deep fry them. Now this is where our dish is kind of going a little bit further away from what would be a traditional Sicilian, Italian, right. New Orleans stuffed artichoke. But we're gonna go ahead and put eggs in here. I'm gonna grab a fork. Or, oh, look, a whisk. Even better tool, right, Chef right. Natasha? So I'm gonna grab that whisk, and I'm gonna whisk these eggs together. Now, I like to add in a little bit of red pepper in this egg mixture. Anytime you're frying things, keep in mind that when you fry things, that is going to create a little bit of sugar from these peppers to come out. So if I were doing a milk wash, 
This milk would have sugars. Those sugars would crystallize. Those crystallized sugars are gonna turn that crust a little bit darker. So we wanna manage that, and I find by putting my pepper or my milk in this first step, then I'm going to help to minimize the amount of that uh, caramelization you would get or that kind of toastiness that you would get. Now, Chef Natasha's like over there working her tail off, <laughs> y'all. This is, you don't have to hurry up on this dish. This is an easy, relaxed dish. Right. This is a family dish. Did you ever cook stuffed artichokes with your family, no, Chef Natasha? No, I have not. This is one thing that I have to say we have not ever made as a family, but I do enjoy it. So this is sort of new for me to make with you today. So this is your first time on TV and yeah. in real life ever cooking a stuffed artichoke? Yeah, I'm not scared. <laughs> Let's do it. So, if I take my artichoke out of the steamer, this is what I end up with. And that center part is the choke. So I'm gonna show you, Chef Natasha, since this is her first time, I'm gonna demonstrate it, and then we're gonna let her go after. So you take your spoon, and you stick it right here in the center, and you pull up these like purple, like thistle like thistle like not good stuff flowers yeah take it so if you can see here you see all of that that is not what we want to eat no you'll That's, choke on that it's going to get caught in your yeah. throat it's going to be funky and not delicious so now we have that whole artichoke heart in the bottom so i'm going to let you go ahead and yeah. try and do it got it it's the first time for everything <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty easy. It, it should be soft and squishy enough from steaming that it comes out easier. If you do it before, it's a lot harder to work mm -hmm. through and uh, oh. more complicated. I think I took some of the heart out. Oh, no. no, I didn't. No, you did good. I got it. You did good. I got Perfect. all of it. It just fell apart. Perfect. See? I did it. <laughs> So now you can see that the artichoke is a flower. Now, uh, if you read the history books, uh, actually, this flower is a, a goddess. Um, Zeus had a uh, lady that he turned into a goddess, and she decided to go and visit the real people, and it upset Zeus. And so evidently, the way the story is, he threw her back to the land uh, in the Mediterranean. In, and turned her into an artichoke. And turned her into an artichoke. So, <laughs> so, so this is, you can be a queen or king for the day if you eat your artichoke here uh, during St. Joseph's Day. And now this artichoke is a flower. The tips of that artichoke, if it starts to change colors, that means that it was probably touched by frost. And you wanna make sure you cut those tips out. And we're gonna start by stuffing the center of our flower and then we're gonna work our way around. Okay. So let's Got it. get after it, Chef Natasha. Now, I have my oil that is almost at 350 degrees. It's actually exactly at 350 degrees. My Louisiana crawfish tails. I like to give them a little rinse and a pat dry. This is gonna make sure that they're, uh, that any of that extra debris that may be left over from when you peeled them from the crawfish boil is removed and out of the way. And now we're gonna take these crawfish tails and I'm gonna put them right here in our egg wash. Now, all we have to do is just kind of give them a little nice toss. If you want, you could do this the night before and just throw them in the fridge and let them sit there. I'm gonna take a few more because the more the merrier, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see how you're doing. Oh yeah, good job, good job. So Lots of crab meat. <laughs> so now my crawfish tails are gonna go in the flour. There are two ways that you can do this when you're frying. Sometimes you, uh, if you're frying something big like a shrimp or a whole soft shell crab, after I bread, it, I bread it in flour, I'll stick it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. What that does is it allows the proteins to kind of bind together. So when you bite it, all the crust doesn't come off in that first bite. But with something small like crawfish tails, you should be A-OK -okay just dropping them right in there and, uh, 
and throwing them straight into the oil. So you should always have a clean hand and a dirty hand. Do you have a clean hand? No, I don't have, I have a dirty, <laughs> I have two dirty hands. Two dirty hands. Well, especially if you're breading, if you throw your, uh, your egg hand into your flour, you're gonna be breading your hand. So try to keep your hands separate as much as you can. We'll drop those in there and then gently fold it over. Now, for those of you who are going, well, what is the point of, you know, I've never heard of the Sicilians in New Orleans and how that is so important, but the Sicilians in South Louisiana are very important. They were our dock workers. They came in the 1850s uh, and they settled in the French Quarter. Some people say that areas of the French Quarter were called the Macaroni District because <laughs> there were so many Sicilians and they would dry their pasta over the balconies. If you've been to South Louisiana ever, you know not much dries on a balcony in the French Quarter. It's gonna be a little too humid, but I think it's a lovely story. But the Sicilians brought with them that love of the artichoke and the love of the tomato, and it single-handedly transformed our Louisiana cuisine. What was originally known as Creole cuisine was classic French, but right. now we see that combination of uh, Sicilian Italian that is working its way in there. Well, it's all in this artichoke, I it can tell you that. It's all in that artichoke. <laughs> Don't waste any of it. I'm not. We're going all out. This is the most expensive artichoke you might ever eat. <laughs> this is the okay. most delicious. <laughs> so when you are frying, you should always drop away from you. By dropping away from you, you're less likely to have that grease really uh, kind of bounce back up. Also, my product is dry. If I were doing something that were wet, that is going to make a huge difference in how many bubbles and splatters we have. So shake these off, drop them in. And Chef Natasha trusts me very much that yes. she's willing to stand right, right next, next to, to the fryer. <laughs> fryer. And don't worry about any of those bits that are floating around in the pan. Those crusty bits are actually some of the most delicious parts. I'm tempted a lot of times to stir. I watch the bubbles, I wanna mess with it. Food cooks itself, let it do what it needs, needs to, to do. do. We are just supervising this process, just like I'm supervising Chef Natasha yes. over here. Your mama is gonna be proud. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she sure will, because I've never done this before. I mean, I've never put this much goodness into a, an artichoke ever and in my life. Now just a big, beautiful, giant, flour yeah it is pretty oh look at that we got a few more little pieces of louisiana crab meat going in here now i don't know if y'all can hear the bubbles in the pan but when i first put the crawfish in there were a ton of bubbles lots of sizzling lots of activity in the pan as they're cooking the amount of bubbles lessen so i always say when you're frying something kind of listen to the pot and the pot will tell you when it's ready because those bubbles are starting to get a little bit more quiet. That's the moisture transfer. That's all that moisture cooking out of the crawfish and bubbling in that oil. Now this is not going to get super dark and toasty because we didn't add a ton of sugars in the flour. All we had was maybe a little bit of uh, garlic powder, or onion powder, maybe some salt is what you'd wanna put. But all of our sugars from the peppers are actually right there in the um, right there in the egg wash. So now, do you want to top? Some yes. Comes on top of this guy here. Absolutely. Or I say this goddess. The goddess. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I think you should put some cheese on top yeah, of it too. Yeah, we got some cheese. While we have it, right there. No. Oh, okay. Throw some cheese. I'm gonna take a little salt and sprinkle a little bit of salt on top of these fried crawfish tails. What this is doing is any moisture that's still on the crawfish tail, it's helping to dry it out. In my pan, Chef Natasha, we yes. have beautiful lemons. We're gonna sit that beautiful right lady right on top and pop her in the oven. I say we top her with a little bit of lemon right on top and we'll Pop her in the oven, let her cook for about 20 minutes, and she'll come out nice and toasty. And by the magic of our uh, C 
seafood television here. I have one already in the oven that'll be ready for us to top. All righty. Garlic in here, yo. Here we go, Chef Natasha. Look at that beautiful, know, beautiful. artichoke. Now, a dish like this would be on a Sicilian St. Joseph's Day altar. And all that food that's cooked, your breadsticks, your pasta, your cookies, fresh, you'll have fresh produce, all that is then given to charity. It's a tribute to St. Joseph by the Sicilians for helping to solve a famine that they were having during the Middle Ages. And that tradition continues today here in New Orleans. And private homes, churches, businesses, schools will set up those altars and provide meals to families. Right. Butter garlic garlic and finish with some lemon juice we're gonna top it with the crawfish tails next right and then you're gonna let me smother them yes. with this goodness here so here we go Ooh. all of our crawfish tails in a nice big pile right on top there's no such thing as too many no and there's no such thing as too much butter no Chef Natasha and I just bought out all the butter at a local grocery store yesterday. It was it went on sale. Best sale price ever. <laughs> <laughs> just stick it in the freezer. <laughs> There's that. When we get to nine pounds of butter in our refrigerator, I start to panic. And I'm like, oh my God, there's not enough butter. Let's go right. ahead and pour that butter right there over the top. Oh, look at all that confit garlic in there. Uh, and confit garlic is garlic that we roasted in oil. So it already had a kind of roasty, toasty flavor. And green to help bring some color to this. Because one thing about food in South Louisiana is all of our food, food is, is brown. Brown, <laughs> brown food is good food. Right. But you add a little bit of chime. Uh, chime. You chime in with a little bit of chive, and then you have a beautiful dish. Uh, super delicious. A tribute to our Sicilian immigrants here Absolutely. in Louisiana. Happy St. Joseph's Day. Now you have a recipe and you know how to cook a seafood stuffed artichoke topped with fried crawfish tails, full of Louisiana crab meat, crawfish, what else? Butter. Lots of butter. More Coffee, butter. garlic. If I could do this, you can do it. This is the first time I ever did it, and I think we, I think it's a success, so. It is an absolute success. So take a little bit of Louisiana home with you, grab some Louisiana seafood, cook an artichoke, fry up those crawfish tails, and just like our, our community here, share it with your friends and family. Right. Happy St. Joseph's Day. Yes. Right.